And we are doing a phenomenal job. If you really track back to the beginning of history, whenever you think that was, and look at what we have done. Now, it's not perfect, and we have done some bad things, and we slip back, and somewhat in a seesawing manner, right? We invent something new, and then it causes problems, so we solve some, some of those problems, and, and then that causes more problems. But we are also helping overall. And if you look, uh, the, the Progress Paradox, one of the more recent books by Easterbrook, written on this subject of how the world is just phenomenally getting better and better and better. He focuses on why we still think that things are getting worse, human nature to, to see the bad side, but almost any metric, the world is getting phenomenally better. War is a terrible thing, for example, still is a terrible thing, and hopefully we envision a time when there is no war. Today on the planet, more people die in car accidents than war as just one of his many points. Now that doesn't mean car accidents are good and war isn't good either, but just things the way we are very proactively for more and more people improving the quality of life and making them live longer. It's very interesting. And a number of books have been written like that over time. But you need to be thinking a little bit about where does your idea fit in? How does it fit into this graph? And one of the fun things to do is over here in this dreaming state. It's quite fun to be dreaming. We don't have to be too accountable. But it's also important to see how these things start. And one of the places they start right off the bat, and this will be in one of your modules as well, is really getting you to talk about today's status quo and the raw pain of today. We don't even want to know about your solution yet. The world is a pretty darn good place. I don't think it has any problem. Oh, you say it, it does have a problem. Diabetes is solved. No, it's not. Let me tell you about some diabetes that's, that are going to shock you, some statistics. I'm not even going to tell you how I solved it. I want to, I want to shock you with, uh, with diabetes, uh, for example. That raw pain, the world is broken, it's not that good. We better hurry up and, and realize that we are in, in, in dire straits here. Today's situation, not that good. And then what's nice is dream about the solutions, raw solutions. Now these are dreams. These are things we think about while we're driving to work or taking a shower or we're on vacation on someplace nice, skiing or on the beach somewhere hot, and we're thinking, wow, I got, it's perfect. Man, this company is going to be great. We're all going to have no problems. I know, I know Mark Wilson said it might be a hard road, but not for us. It's beautiful. Well, because you're dreaming, and that's important. It's important to keep that passion, but we also have to burst that, that bubble of, of dream because Things work out well in our dreams and our self-talk. Don't have to answer to anyone. So one of the most valuable, one of the most valuable drawings on this drawing board right here tonight is, is this right here. Is the, the, cup of, the cup of coffee. The nice cup of coffee that you're going to share with people because you're going to start talking about your ideas. You need to share your ideas with some friendly, friendly subject matter experts and some friendly potential customers. People that know the industry, people that have done startups before, they know more than you. Learn from them, but they're friendly. You know, you're, you're, they're, going to, they're going to be honest, but, but they're not going to steal your idea and they're, 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 uh, they're going to help you. And they understand your, your, your way over here. Friendly potential customers. As soon as you can, you want to start talking to people that could actually benefit and buy from you. Now, they're not really going to be able to buy for a while, but they're going to shape. And so these cups of coffees are very important. And you can start doing it tomorrow, not tomorrow, you'll be here, but Saturday morning. And I hope you all go and have some coffees, even in the one week between Fridays, that you go and start talking to people. Burst the bubble and get some reality and start shaping, letting them influence you. Now, very, very important, very, very important. While you are making the, the coffee, or, or if you're at your own little machine there, you know, for five minutes or less, you get to use this part of your body right there. your mouth, five minutes. And while you're having the cup of coffee, 
you're using this part of your body right here. And that seems real obvious, but that is not easy to do. And as a passionate person, you, we, we all, we want to talk. We want to talk a lot. We ask a question and interrupt the very first sentence to tell, oh, wait, I didn't tell you more, though. And then they try answering again, and we say, but I, actually, I forgot to even tell you the good part. And this coffee is gone pretty fast. And they're backing up, and they're saying, hey, thank you. And they're trying to walk away, and you're chasing them out the door, saying, no, no, wait. I want to know if you're going to help, and I really appreciate your input. And the person's saying, I didn't even give you any input, and you haven't listened to a thing I've said. So it's important as we start reaching out to organize what we're trying to find out you're not going to get one answer. You're not going to find one person in one cup of coffee get every single answer you need. But segment down. What, what's going to be important to find out? And who would I be best to ask that of? And go have that cup of coffee with them and ask that question and then listen. You're in charge. It's your company. You don't have to tell them that. Just say thank you very much. If you don't like their advice, that's fine. There's a lot more coffee to be, to be had. So listen. Very, very easy, easier said than done. Now, I just said that you should start talking to people, and there is something very important that you need to know. Uh, well, don't people steal ideas? Well, yes, they do. Most humans are actually very evil, and they go around every day looking to try and steal scientists' ideas, and boy, when they find one, they jump right on it, and they mortgage their homes and charge out their credit cards, and they uh, take huge risks and steal people's ideas. That's how most of it works. So I wanted to tell you that. No, that was 100% sarcasm. You know, people don't go around stealing ideas and they're too busy with their own lives anyway and they don't want to take risks. And you have something they don't. You have at least a willingness to say, you know, I think I'm going to take a risk on this. So that's also a valuable asset of yours. Nonetheless, you know, you do want to be a little bit careful. And so you really want to start thinking about your intellectual property Patents, you're, you're all based on research. You have some patents. You need to be thinking what patent or patents are already important. Where are they? Have they been issued? Are they, do they have global coverage? But also, what other ones should you be working on? And are those going to be worked on at the university? Are those things that you're going to map out into here in your company? More than that, though, barriers to entry. Patents are very important. They're only a part of the importance. Right? So you have to be thinking... What other aspects do I have that are barriers to entry that won't let other people into this space or where we are way ahead because of our knowledge or our <coughs> connections or something like that? So you really want to think through that strategy. Most important thing there is at least up front to think of a can-can't table. What can you talk about in public? What can't you talk about in public? Easier, usually you can talk about almost everything. It's easier to just say, you know what? Make sure you don't talk about this. Don't get into this detail. And likewise for the pre-seed workshop. There's no reason in the first module we want to learn about your, your science. If there's parts of it that are not covered in patents or you're a little reluctant to share, don't share them right now. That's okay. That's okay. I'll, uh, we don't need to know all that. We'll believe you. All right, but part of that is figuring that out. Now let's move into the, this. by the way, this is called concept stage in general. It's a fuzzy road, but we're in the concept stage. We're just thinking about things. And then we're getting into the pre-seed stage. Pre-seed comes more from the, the venture terms about seed money. Seed money being the very earliest money that any venture capitalist would put in, which usually is around in here, really. So pre-seed is bef before, kind of before anything. Also interesting, the word pre-seed. It precedes everything. You're really trying to get your act together and figure out what you're going to do. And a few things that are important here to, to keep in mind. One of them is the, the pre-seed workshop format or any, any idea accelerator program like this where you're very rapidly thinking through a list of questions and you'll have some time pressure and the end result though you will have thought about quite a lot, not very deeply, so your slides are going to be very fuzzy, but nonetheless, you'll have, you'll have something. You'll have something that you can present to talk through some of the critical aspects of your idea. 
And you will have that by, by next Friday. You'll be able to stand up and, and give a little bit of a show, a little bit of a talk about what your idea is and where you think it's going and spend a little bit of time working through that. In fact, we have a template for you. Your coaches know about it. And we're forcing you to use the exact same titles on the exact same slides. You can fill them in how you want to, but we want to know that you've put a little bit of time in each area of the idea. Keep in mind as you move forward that really what you're doing, you're, you're building a series of these, really, presentations. You could think of them that way. And you need to build up a variety of these. For example, uh, a business plan competition maybe is boiling down another format where you get to talk for 20 minutes or 10 minutes or whatever it might be. You may need a very deep technical dive. You need to maybe go deep for uh, two hours in the actual science and you need to be ready on that. Maybe you need to really go into the financials at some point for an hour or two with someone that really works through in, in 15, 20 minutes just the business model and how is it going to work and all the financials and then have some discussion where you're prepared to go deeper, which has nothing to do with your science, nothing to do with some of these other pieces. But you think of that as a series, a collection of presentations, including the elevator pitch. The elevator pitch. Who can tell me what an elevator pitch is? Elevator pitch. Exactly. You want to just say it a lot louder, please. Yes. Uh, you have to explain your idea while you're getting two floors up. Two floors up. Yeah, that's that's really short. Or yeah, even a couple of a couple of seconds, thirty seconds, a couple of lines. The theory comes. You, you never know who's part of your investment team and how they might help you. So be prepared that if. In theory, you're on an elevator at a hotel somewhere. You get on and you're standing there and, hello, what do you do? You might be standing next to someone who could really help you with your business.